I'm now joined by Fiona O'Carroll, one of the stars of the show of Copperface Jacks, the musical by Paul Howard. How are you getting on and welcome to Limerick. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely to meet you, Megan. How are you? I'm so good. It's obviously opening night. It's County Colours Night, so I did dress mm-hmm. for the part. Galway woman living in Limerick. Um, tell me, though, about the, the show and, of course, playing the uh, infamous Gretchen. Well, I do play the part of Gretchen and uh, she's an American uh, feminist um, and she comes in to uh, kind of stir things up a little bit. I mean, it's a classic love story, but very, very funny because, uh, well, anything Paul Herod writes is always hilarious. And uh, yeah, it's kind of on the based kind of around the whole Dublin Kerry rivalry thing, you know, uh, with the GAA and um, boy meets girl in Copper Face Jacks. And uh, Gretchen uh, comes in and then she kind of, she's like a, a catalyst for, for a lot of things, which is great. Talking now about coppers, obviously we've all been there, we've all experienced it, we all know what it's all about. Um, have you any copper stories for us? Um, not really. I, I, do you know what? I'll be honest, I've been there maybe twice or three times in my lifetime. Um, and the last time I was there must have been over 20 years ago. Um, I'm sure not much has changed. <laughs> And uh, I've no doubt at some stage we'll probably all end up in covers during this tour. Um, so I'm looking forward to going back and uh, seeing as, uh, as anything changed. But uh, I was actually, the last time I was there, um, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this now, but uh, Bernard Dunn had just kind of uh, thrown in his gloves. He'd finished and retired. And uh, we all went out to celebrate and uh, we all ended up in coppers. And I, I actually felt quite old. <laughs> Uh, so we'll uh, we'll go back there now at some stage and I'll probably feel even older. So I think now it has this like upstairs toppers VIP section that everyone goes on about and apparently if you, everyone's like have you, going up to, have you gone up to toppers and I remember when I first heard of it I was like sorry what but apparently it's this special VIP floor where usually the Dublin footballers go so maybe that's where you guys could go. Maybe, maybe <laughs> if they let us in. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they used to have these cards. The yeah, Copperface the Jack, cards. They the gold cards. Remember those? <laughs> Um, and I think I got given one at one stage and uh, I'm sure I have one in the attic somewhere but uh, I might have to go out and have a route and are they still accepting those cards? I don't know if they are, are they? Oh yeah Oh I think they are That's worth a lot of money now you know <laughs> Oh really? Oh god right we'll keep that safe so <laughs> um, The great thing though about this musical is the fact that it's now coming to, to Limerick because you know I guess um, it's been in Dublin um, but there's something about the country folk and coppers I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction tonight now to some of the comments in the show, I'll be honest. I'd say we're going to get a few laughs and a few boos in places that we're not used to. Um, But yes, finally, we're actually taking it on tour. We're bringing it to Cork as well as Limerick, which is amazing. And it deserves it. It's a great show and it deserves to actually to to, to go all over Ireland. So it's um, because... A lot of people would have travelled up to Dublin to see it. So finally we're bringing it to them. But it's funny, like a lot of us would travel up to Dublin, especially, you know, the night before a game in Crow Park. And yeah. it is go to Dublin and go to Coppers. It's, it's such a thing. Like it's, it's, what, it's kind of what we do. Well, yeah, but that, I mean, that, that's the beauty of this show as well. <laughs> it, uh, it hits home for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people can relate to it, which is great. And uh, please God, we'll have some more of uh, people coming up and maybe we'll all end up in Coppers, who knows? <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, I have to remind everyone again, it is County Colours Night tonight. So wear your colours and as well, uch.ie for tickets. There is a few nights, of course, of Copperface Jackson Musical. But Fiona Carroll, I can't let you go without chatting, of course, about who you are. And of course, we all know you from Mrs. Brown's Boys and your father being Brendan O'Carroll. So for you, was, was acting just always going to be what you were going to do? Yeah, I think so. I mean, to be honest, I probably started in the business before my dad did. Um, I, I started at a very young age. Um, I had a single uh, top ten in the charts in the Irish charts when I was ten. Oh my god! Yeah, and that was at a point when <clears throat> my dad was only just starting off in the business, and nobody knew who he was, and he was out looking for gigs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think it was always. I think once I did that in school, and I have my school to thank for that. Actually, um, the teachers in there were absolutely amazing. And it's, it's, not, it's very rare that you, you come across teachers like that who can instill that in you and bring all that out in you. You know, um, a lot of people have horror stories from being in school, but I have to say I've had some wonderful experiences. And um, I think that's where it started for me. And I knew then that I wanted to perform. I really did, because I just loved every bit of it, not just singing, but just performing in general. So I started doing um, acting classes and I went to the Oscar Dublin School of Acting. At which point then my dad was actually uh, in, had a higher profile and had done the late late and all of that. Um, and that comes also with, you know, a, a huge kind of expectation mm-hmm. and responsibility. People expect you to, 
be this amazing performer, you know? So it kind of can go for you or against you, to be honest, uh, growing up, especially as a teenager. And, um, and then of course, into the role of Mrs. Brown <laughs> was very interesting as a teenager because I was being taken out into the ladies department helping my dad shop for clothes. And that was very interesting and mortifying. Um, and then trying to explain to people back then as well. I mean, people are a lot <clears throat> more open to things now, but back then it was like, are you sure your dad's not gay? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. No, he's playing a woman. Like he's actually playing a woman and people just couldn't get their head around it. I remember first seeing it and like that, I think I was going, oh, what's going on here? But now you look at the success of it. It is absolutely massive. Like I was sitting one morning and this morning was on with Holly and Phil and, and there he was. And I was kind of going like, it's huge. And especially in the UK, they absolutely love it. I know, even I lose track at this stage. I have people calling me going, oh, I saw your dad. And I'm like, what was he on? I get told nothing. He's on everything at the minute, which is great, you know, and... We were very, very lucky, to be honest. I mean, we were touring with that show for a very long time. Like, I started with the show when I was 19, I think, wow. in 2000, early 2000. And um, we were happy enough going around, do, oh, sorry, doing all the theatres and uh, just kind of making our few bob, enough to put food on the table and all that. And sometimes not. Sometimes you'd go months and there was nothing. Um, and it, but we loved it and we loved performing as a family and it yeah. gave us an opportunity to actually do that as a family because growing up my dad was away quite mm. a lot and um, it was lovely to be able to do what I love but also do it with the people that I love and then luckily enough we were in Glasgow one time and uh, a producer came in from the BBC to see the show and he absolutely loved it and was like I need to make this into a TV series and at the time my dad had heard it all before and at one stage I think we had tried and we considered trying to do a series and the funding just wasn't there. Mm. Um, so we were like, yeah, right, we'll see what happens. But three years later, <laughs> now it took him three years yeah. to convince BBC to actually do it. And there was a many a meeting of the F word and how many Fs we were allowed to have in the, in the show. And, and because my dad never wanted to change the show because as far as he was concerned, the show was the show. And if we were to put it on TV, that's fine. But we didn't want people going to watch the series um, on TV and then coming to a live show and going, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. We couldn't have such a massive contrast. People had to know what they were getting, you know? So there was all that going on, but it took three years in the making. And then obviously it went on to the BBC and it was a huge success. And we were all stunned by it, absolutely stunned. And touch wood, it, uh, it, it, it continues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, dad has worked very hard, mm -hmm. you know, and people, very often people look at comedy and think it's easy. In fact, it's actually very, very difficult and uh, people will look at the series or look at the show and see all these one-liner jokes and what comes across as simple jokes, people go, oh, that's, you know, they're not actually, mm -hmm. you know, and performing them are, you know, even harder again and getting the time and everything else. So I have to say he deserves every bit of it. He really does because he works his booty off. And of course you do too because it, as we all love watching you as well on it and as again tonight we look forward to seeing you on Cockface Jacks the Musical here in UCH tickets uch.ie Fiona Carroll absolute pleasure chatting to you on the Limer Post And you please come along <laughs> I guarantee you will have a laugh I promise you that much it'll be hilarious <laughs>